Hi, everybody. Father Bill Holtzinger here, and this is your Friday Reflection. Well, I'm recording this on Wednesday, and this is the day after the elections, and so we all know the outcome of the elections, whether it be ballot measures or people running for office. And maybe uh, you, as you're watching this, are sad because of how things how they turned out, or you are happy because of how they turned out. Regardless of what that is, I want to offer again and remind you some counsel here, and I take this for myself. I mean, in other words, I'm preaching to myself as well. And that is, we, in fact, the U.S. bishops speak about civility, and I think that's important because there's been a lot of incivility or lack of civility within our, our country and many different occasions surrounding uh, the political process. But yet we are called to participate in the political process. So now that we have a sense of what is going on, I want to encourage you, and I know here at Holy Trinity this is something I've already seen just today, to be people more than just civil, but to be people who are loving. Loving is a much greater action than uh, just being civil. Snickers is digging a hole in the carpet, so to speak. Actually, it's a, in his little bed there. So anyhow, sorry, distraction. Squirrel! Uh, that we are called to be more than just civil. We are called, as we hear from Jesus, to love one another as he has loved us. And even more, the harder one, which is, to love your enemies. So, when we may have been divided, we're called to be united. And that means that we may not agree with the decisions that have been made. We might not agree with each other about where we stand. But here is the litmus test. And it's a small one. It's like sports. Today, it's big. And that is, how are we going to love each other? How are we going to then reach out to those who we may differ. And when we are with people who agree with us, how we behave that, that way as well with them. We are to be people of compassion. We are called to mourn with those who mourn and rejoice with those who rejoice. That doesn't mean, though, that we agree with each other. Remember, as I said last week, the, in the presidential campaigns, in the presidential campaign, no person was holding the consistent ethic of life, the, the teachings of the Catholic Church, the social teaching of the Catholic Church, in its completeness. And so all of our ballots as Catholics were a compromise if you chose to vote for somebody. I know that that was the case for me. As I turned in my ballot, I knew there was compromises, and I just prayed to God that I didn't make a mistake and um, leave it at that, leave it with God. I... I processed what I had control over, and that is what I voted for. That's the sphere of my influence, and now it's beyond me into a sphere of interest, and I have no control over that. And so, therefore, I'm letting it go, even though you and I may have differences within however we voted. Because for me, and I hope it is for you as well, that love is more important than all these things. God is love, and we put God first in our hearts, and he calls us to then be one. Coming to Mass this morning, I, I preached about this same thing, but I saw in people's hearts and eyes, well, I should say in their eyes and their smiles, uh, a, a sense of concordance with this sense, that it is important that we now be people greater than the political process, to be greater than our partisan politics, because politics isn't everything. God and his love is everything, and that changes everything. So in the days that are going forward, as we now approach this coming weekend, and you come to the church or wherever you're going uh, during the week before then, I want to encourage you to love as God loves and to rejoice in his presence, whether you... You know, you got what you wanted or did not get what you wanted in the sense of the elections to still offer praise to God. So here's an example. Praise to God because I think what happened should have happened or praise to God. It didn't happen, but I want to proclaim into darkness light, which is God's presence. This is how we fight again. And I can use this term a lot. How do we fight our battles? When you are in a place where it's dark, when you're in a place where you're struggling or where you feel a sense of oppression, 
we're not praising God for the depression and for the darkness, but we're praising God that God is greater than it all. That God has a plan that we may not understand, but we still believe and we proclaim that. And evil hates that. Satan flees from that. This is how we, this is how we do the battle. Because it's really between principalities and spirits, between demons and angels and humans. And you know who's on our side? God is on the side of humans and angels, and we're to conform ourselves to him. And I hope last week when I offered my homily that the, the more we love God with all the heart, soul, and mind, with our whole being, the more we'll be like him, the more this will be, we'll be more capable of loving like he does. I want to leave you with that thought. To be more than just civil, to be loving, to actively love those with whom we have agreed and disagreed with, not to gloat and not to be in a place of anger and bitterness lashing out, to show compassion, to show love. This weekend, Deacon Brett will be offering the homily, so please pray for him. And I will see you, not on Saturday, I, will, I have a funeral I need to go to. Uh, please pray. Uh, my former roommate of mine passed away several weeks ago. And I'll be in Corvallis for his funeral. But please pray for Deacon Brett, and I'll be back on Sunday to celebrate Masses with you. God bless you all. Bye-bye.